coming in at one and one as well. Starters for Burkmar, they will be in white. It'll be Lane Foster, Leroy Jones the fourth, Al Durham, Joshua Faulkner, and Darius Harrison. For the Newton Rams, it'll be J.D. Note, Ashton Hagens, Jaquan Sims, DeAndre Butler, and Josh Tooks. We are underway. Newton is in the blue. Burkmar is in the white. And Newton working on office. They've got black numbers, and here's Hagens. Hagens being worked on and pressured by Leroy Jones. The Burkmar crowd, the Burkmar bench, of course. They've got the two transfers who are still unable to play in Zach Cooks and J.S. Steins. And a turnover first for the Newton Rams. That's that pressure defense, you know. It's two things pressure does. It's either going to bust pipes or it's going to make diamonds. we got to figure out what's going to happen tonight. Foster across the forecourt. Foster working between the rings. Hands it off to Al Durham, who's going to Indiana. Al going to move and pass it down low to Faulk Faulkner. Kick it back. There's Faulkner. Faulkner going to hesitate. Now give it to Durham. He bobbled it and lost it. A turnover. So each team starts with a turnover. Here come the Newton Rams back this way. Pull up. A long three out of the corner. It's going to be short. No good. Rebound is going to be chased down by Josh Toops. So that foul is going to be called on Leroy Jones. That'll be his first free throw by Butler is good. And we are in the books. Second free throw is good by Butler. So walking it into the full court now for Burkmar. They swing it to the left. Here's Faulkner. Josh Faulkner has it between the rings. Faulkner with the dribble in the handoff to Leroy Jones. Leroy Jones, the fourth, picks up his dribble now to Faulkner. Faulkner on the left wing, going to drive all the way. It was tipped, knocked out of bounds, and it will be a turnover over to the Newton Rams. Newton head coach is Rick Rasmussen. They're coming in at 78.5 points per game, and then they're just allowing 63 points per game early in the season. Going over a screen is Hagens. Hagens on stop. Pullback jumper is good. Ashton Hagens is on the board and he has two points. Way to stop on a dime and pull back and just release it. Ball going to go out of bounds off of Lane Foster's thigh out of bounds and it will be Newton Ball. So the Newton Rams will bring it into the full court. Hagens gives it over, and he passes it over to Butler. Butler now gives it off to Note. Note's three is no good. Rebound going to come down to Josh Faulkner. Faulkner into the full court. Faulkner working on the dribble, goes between the legs, and now gets the screen, goes around it. Stop, foul line, jumper, pull up is good. Josh Faulkner has Burkmar on the board. Four to two, and a little more than two minutes gone by in this contest. Hagen's on the cross. Picked up by Leroy Jones Jr. Now gives it over to Note. Kick it back out to the top and a foul. A push there. And that's going to be Leroy Jones, the fourth, second foul. Foul on the Patriots, number four, Jones. Leroy Jones. And they go to the bench quickly and for, for Burkmar. Number 33, Taylor checks in, and there's a jump out of the corner. It is good. It's a two-pointer. And count it. We'll give it to Jaquan Sims, number 14. Faulkner holding in the corner. There's Al Durham. Durham going to skip it across. Putting it on the floor baseline. Short corner jumper is going to be no good. Rebound ripped out of the air. And here come the Newton Rams. Newton running in transition. Layup off the window is good. Beautiful way to run the break right there. Nice put in again from Jaquan Sims. <laughs> Layup.
Lane Foster with that last field goal, and it's eight to four. Putting it on the floor, push off. Yes, sir. Nope, going to be an offensive foul called. Offensive okay. foul called on JD. Oh, he caught him with a travel, okay. Travel on Note. Faulkner holding it to the left. Faulkner puts it on the floor and then he skips it across. One to pull the three stop on the put. One jumper. Good. One dribble and one jump shot coming over there. Lane Foster with the field goal. No way to use that pump fake. Gets the man in the air. Then steps up and shoot that. The lost art of the mid-range jumper. Oh, trying to get him on skates and a yeah. carrying violation. Palming, carrying. It's that carrying, moving the ball under. You know, a lot of kids, they see these guys in the NBA when they do the crossover move like that. But what they don't realize is these, these guys in the NBA, they're grown men. They have grown men-sized hands so they can keep their hand on the top of the ball when they do those crossover moves like that. Or well, on the side of the ball. As long as it's not under the ball. That's when it turns into a carrying violation. Jumper by Durham. No good. Durham, one of those effective players with a smooth, fluid style. Newton walks it into the full court. They're leading. Taylor is also in now for Burkmar. Eight to six. See some Burkmar alum. Burkmar wins state championship. They keep a basketball squad at Burkmar. Free throw is up. And going to rattle in there good. Front iron and fill in for DeAndre Butler. Lane Foster checks back into the contest. Free throw is up and in. Good. So Butler sticks them both. He's 4-4 from the free throw line. Kick it to the top. There's Faulkner. Faulkner, foul line extended. Jumper, good. Right there to the foul line. Faulkner knocked in that jumper. It's 10-8 to eight now. Around the screen. Stop. There's a three. No good by Sims. Sims get the rebound. They kick it back out. Sims is going to get it with 2.30 to go. Less than that. Skip pass to the top. Hagens holds it. Man gets him on a cut to Butler. Butler in the lane. Shot up. Counted and the foul. DeAndre Butler and one. I like to see a big man use his body like that in the post, you know, create some space for himself and put his body between the defender and the basket to get a hoop in the hall and go to the line and try to hit that three-point play. Darius Harrison will check into the contest for Burkmar and taking a seat will be Shea Swan. Free throw, Butler, back iron, unable to complete the three-point play. That's his first missed free throw. He's four or five at the line. So Foster's pass is going to be intercepted. And now here comes Newton all the way spinning, and then he lost it. Harrison is going to pick it up for Burkmar and a foul on the floor. And that foul will be called on Jaquan Sims. I can tell that we're getting closer to the nightcap because the gym is getting warmer and warmer. <laughs> Number four, Ain't nothing wrong with it. Feels so good. Durham inbounds it to Leroy Jones. Under two minutes to go, 12 to 8 here in the first quarter. Burke Moore in white, moving right to left. And Newton there in blue. So Jones is going to drive. He's going to lay it off. Nice bounce pass. Shot up, no. Harrison fouled. And he'll be fouled down there by number 32, Josh Tooks. Tooks will pick up the foul. Number 32, Josh Tooks. Sending number. 
So here is Darius Harrison, 6'7", and a senior, and the free throw is off the mark, no good. Second free throw is up and good. So they're walking into the full court, swing it down to the left. Kick it. There's a long three. Good. Bang, bang, bang. All three of them from Ashton Hagen. And it took us that long to get our first three-pointer here in this game, which has probably been the longest we've had to wait for a three-pointer all day. Pass off his leg. Hagen's with the steal. Three on one. Going to go with a reverse layup. No. He missed it. Rebound going to come back out. Now Tooks going to have it. Tooks over to Grant Daquam in the corner. It's a three. No good. Reached out of bounds. And off of Berkmore. Excuse me, off of Chaz Tanner. Tanner into the game for Newton. Sims had that three over there in that left corner. He, you could tell he wanted it. Foster to Faulkner. Faulkner into the full court. Now back over to Lane Foster. Foster with the dribble. Now kicks it in the corner as Leroy Jones, the fourth. One minute, less than a minute to go here in the first quarter. There's a jumper by Faulkner. Good. Rattled it home. Josh Faulkner having a big first quarter. He has six in the contest. 15 to 11. Cut it to four. That nice push jumper right there around the free throw line. That's those mid-range jumpers. That's the lost art that, that I've been looking for. You know, you got a lot of kids. They want three or nothing. It's that mid-range jumper that gets you to the next level. Greg Phillips, the head coach of Burke Marsh, standing at the red vest on. Coach Rasmussen sitting down here on the end. He's sitting for the moment. Working some clock, 22 seconds to go, and Hagens holds it. Getting a count, so he gives it over to Chaz Turner. Turner now between the rings over to Hagens. Clock down to 10 seconds now, and here's Tanner. Tanner gives it off. There's the jump by Sims. It is no good. Rebound kick back out. There's a corner. Three. Good. Second chance points and a three-pointer to end the first quarter. The three ball by J.D. Note. We reach the end of the first. 18 to 11. Newton leading Burkmar. <laughs> Me back as we begin the second quarter. Burkmar in possession of the basketball, trailing Newton 18 11. Joel Hillsman, Sylvester Williams, glad to be here with you from Duluth High School on the Radar Classic presented by the Atlanta Hawks and Metro PCS. A three ball. Al Durham with that three. His first points in the contest, and that makes it 18 to 14. Nice to see the young man get on the board. Yeah, he's, a, he's an efficient basketball player, very sound. Very fluid. He's just a junior, so the way he will continue to grow as a basketball player will be exceptional to watch. There's a steal, and here comes Durham. Durham into the full court. The feathery left-hander now goes, dribbles to the corner, goes baseline, and a foul call. And let's see, that may be on Chaz Turner. It will. Foul called on Chaz Turner, number 24, 6-3 for the Newton Rams. The young man went up to Bloomington a little bit earlier in the year and decided to commit to Indiana. Fell in love with the campus up there. Bit of surprise for most people. Bloomington's a lovely place now. 
Trust me, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, and Indianapolis ain't that far away, and it's not that bad. Long three, Faulkner, good. He is feeling good. He has nine in the contest. Joshua Faulkner with a three ball. And the lead now is down to one for Newton. Newton with a one-point lead. Burkmar with the opening six points. Here's Hagens. Hagens goes behind his back. Now he dumps it down low. Layup off the glass. Good, Buck. Nice move on the inside to use your body. And had to stop the bleeding. A minute and a half now gone by. There's Leroy Jones, a three. No, badly missed. Rebound comes down to Josh Tooks. Tooks outlets it, and here comes Newton Anote. Going to drive all the way. Hagen shot up off the rim, though. No. Tooks tried to get the tip. It goes out of bounds, and will go to Berkmar. Faulkner into the forecourt between the rings. Gets a screen from Harrison. Doesn't use it. Here's Durham. Durham dipped his shoulder down in a foul call. Foul will be called on Jaquan Sims. Foul to the rims, number 14, Jaquan Sims. Sims did not agree with that. And that is Newton's fourth. Each team with four fouls. Foster calling out the offensive set goes to Faulkner. Faulkner in the left wing. Long pass over to Leroy Jones. Going to attack down the right baseline. Give it off to Harrison. Harrison up off the window. Good. There is Harrison. His first field goal. He has three points in the game. No Tay holds it. Coming off the screen. Pop. There's a long three. Jaquan Sims. No. Couldn't get the roll. Rebound swallowed up by Harrison. And now here come the Patriots back this way. Moving to Leroy Jones. Now they get it and hold it in that corner. Kick it back out. There's Durham. Durham, oh, long cross court pass. A three by Foster. Good. Durham dimed it to him with a beautiful right hand pass from the lefty. And the three ball gives Burkmar their first lead of the day. It's 22 to 20. Ball was tipped out of bounds off of Lane Foster and Burkmar. It will stay with Newton. Checking into the game now. And right now, Burkmar has a two-point lead. And what what that shows you is when you stick with your offense and you're patient and you continue to play defense, you'll break stuff down and you'll, be, and you'll take over the lead just like that. And that's exactly what Burkmar did. They stuck with their offense. They were patient on offense, played strong defense, and now they have the lead. Here we go, halfway through the second quarter. Low Axum has checked in for Burkmar, and in for Newton is Marvin Borea. And a driving layup is scored by J.D. Note. He has five. And that quickly puts them back up, and that quickly ties the ball game at 22. 4.45 to go. Coming off that screen, and now Axum holds it. He gives it over. There's a pump fake from Faulkner. Faulkner jump stopping through the lane up. And a traveling violation call. Didn't see that. A jump stop. He came to a land. But a traveling violation nonetheless. For the Patriots, number two, Ashton And you know, that's one thing. That's, that's one of those plays where they try to take that Euro hop or that jump stop or whatever you want to call it. I think it's a travel every time they do it, but. It took two steps going to the basket. I didn't like that call. And plus he called it from behind. The layup down low, blocking foul, and one count the basket for Tooks. Josh Tooks with his first field goal. That's good. And makes it 24 to 22. More substitutions now. Checking back in is Chance Turner for the Newton Rams. So Tooks, the lefty at the line, to try to complete the three-point play the old-fashioned way. And does. Foster into the full court, right hand dribble now, gives it back to the left, going to go down the baseline, Faulkner kicked it out, turnover, pass the right there, the Newton head coach, Rick Rasmussen, who picks up the ball and points that it's in their direction, and now yells out the set. A 
Higgins as they run their offense. Gets the screen up top, spinning in the lane. Stop. Up. This referee is infatuated with traveling. Same one just called a ref. Yeah, he took that extra step. Once he hit the spin move, he's supposed to go ahead and lay it up or get rid of it. But he took that little pitter-patter at the end, and that's a travel every time you do it. Sylvester. No, it's not. Well, you take that extra pitter-patter. <laughs> Need you to start watching some NBA, man. That's a legal move now. I'm, I'm, I'm messing with Sylvester. We're having fun up here. We're having us a lot of fun. Driving Durham, right hand up, no foul. He'll go to the free throw line. Foul going to be on Josh Toops. Durham's been relatively quiet this first half, and I notice what a lot of what he's doing, he's trying to work off for of picks and hoping his teammates find them. But sometimes I believe if you're the star, if you're the go-to player on the team, you got to be greedy. You got to have that Kobe in you. I'm not talking about 2000 and. 13 and on Kobe. I'm talking about 2012 and earlier Kobe. You got to have that dog in you where you want to take over a game and you want to take control and set the tempo yourself. And I think that's what Durham needs to start doing. He needs to start force, forcing the issue. So. Al Durham is such a fluid player and such an efficient player. He will not take a lot of high volume shots. He's so efficient, and that's what makes him so good. There goes the three watches good. See, there it is. But that's force his game. But that's his game. He's not going to force it. That was in the flow right there. I've seen Al Durham play for three years. I've seen him force two shots. He just doesn't do it. You know, everybody says his coach is, his dad is a coach, which he is, but not at a high school team. He works hard in the offseason. He, he's very savvy and knowledgeable about the offense, where everybody's supposed to be, and when you get your shots. And see, one thing was funny. Earlier this week, the offense had broken down, and Coach Phillips yelled out, Al, come get the ball. And Al came and got the ball, and Al went and scored. But the coach had to say, go get it, because he was still trying to execute. And he's that type of player, but then you look up, he got 22, 24, and it's like the quiet is 24 <laughs> points, because nothing's forced. He's missed one shot today. Think about it. He's only missed one shot today. And he's canned him two, a pair of threes and two free throws. So he's sitting there with eight points. And then missed for one shot. And hadn't taken but three, three shots. But I like my studs to shoot. He is stud. I like he's that. He's a, a stud. He's he, a, he, he is a stud. He's just not a high volume shooter. I've seen him on the uh, on the AU circuit and the EY BL circuit. Chaz Tanner put it in. And, and I love the kid's game. I love his game. But sometimes I just want my stars to take over. On the break, stop, up and under. A foul was not called. Durham now leading the break after he gets the rebound. Here comes Durham. Durham all the way. Left it off. No. Swan lost it out of bounds. Durham went to the right. He had Foster running with him on the left. And you see him and Swan are talking about it. And they want to make sure they're good. But instead of dapping him up, his man will score. Nice. Didn't get back on D. He wanted to dap up Al and got beat. Butler with the layup. Butler in double figures now with 10. I uh, definitely. No, they got it reversed. They got it reversed. It's thirty twenty seven. They 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 the scoreboard is messed up. They got the score reversed. Because it was 24. They hit the three. That makes it 27. They had 28, and that makes it 30. The score is wrong. They owe everybody a point. We got it right on our side. 26 to 29 is what the scoreboard in the arena says. Shot no good. 
Durham going to chase down the rebound and get it up ahead. And it'll be out of bounds. It will go off of Butler and go to... Oh, no, they said it was off of Burkmar and will go to Newton with 2.06 to go. See if they adjust that at halftime. It's two minutes to go before the half. Pump fake. Shot is up. No good. Rebound in the paint. Put it up and in. Good. That's Butler. Ninety-five seconds. They get it down low. Shot was blocked. Harrison fighting. Harrison put it back up and in good. Oh, he might have got away with a travel. Jumper is going to be no good. So here is Durham. Durham into the forecourt. Durham all the way swooping up. Layup. No, that's his second missed shot. Rebound comes out. And a hole called on Burkmar. And it may be on Foster, I think it is. And I think that's what they're going to talk about now. They're calling the referee over to take a look at the score. Each team is owed a point. Well, whatever they said, they hadn't corrected it on the scoreboard. But I, each team is owed a point on the scoreboard. It should be 32-29. It's still 31-28 in the arena. I was quiet because I was quickly adding it up. I'm on point. I keep my scorebook. You all know that if you watch SUV TV, you know I keep my own scorebook here. Upstairs, and I still got it right. We'll see if they fix it at the half with 37 seconds. And see, that's what they're talking about with the coach. You see this? They're talking about that. She's talking to him about it, and he's and she's talking to him about it. The score for each team. The difference is the same. They're just owed a point. So here's Faulkner. Faulkner now over to, excuse me, that was Foster to Faulkner. Here's Faulkner. Faulkner going to drive. He just flipped the shot up in and went in. He threw up a prayer on that one. Josh Faulkner. And the shot at the buzzer is no good. The scoreboard in the arena says 31 to 30. We have it 32, 31 at the half.
Presented by the Atlanta Hawks and Metro PCS. So the score now has been corrected. It is 31 to 30. Two refs ruled a three. One ref overruled two. Made it a two. I did it that way in my book. They flipped it on the scoreboard. I did it that way in my book. So I went down, got both books, got my book right, they books right, scores right, and the second half is underway and it may start with a turnover. Now we've got They started the half early. Now we've got another discrepancy. You thought I was picking on that ref earlier about them traveling violations? You thought I was joking about that? Yeah. Some things, I don't know. You just When you've been around basketball and you watch so much basketball, you just see certain little... It's certain little things you can see. After you watch enough, after you've been around the sport long enough... <laughs> and as much coverage as SUV gives and SUV, SUV provides, you pick up on these little things. Now, those of you out there, did remember, you see what just happened? They did switched you? over the possession. Do you know why that happened? Because um, Burke Maul won the tap. <laughs> Thank you. So why would they be inbounding the ball to start the third quarter? Little it's, simple stuff like that. It's, it's early in the season for the no, refs, too. It's I early in the season. No excuse. Jumper is going to roll in good by Jaquan Sims. I was at a football game this year, a high school game, in the middle of the season, since you want to use the early <laughs> part. They did the coin toss, selected the directions, and then the refs sent them out the wrong way. Come on, well, man. So... And I should have known right then that that game was going to be some questionable refereeing. Three ball. And guess what happened? Well, Joe, there's a couple of ways you can look at that. No. We you got to remember, everybody out there is a Sylvester Williams. So you can't you can't expect per- perfection out of everybody else. Seriously? Sims pulls him with three. I'm trying to find a way to segue out of there. A minute gone by here in the third quarter, 36 to 30. He's Sylvester Williams, as we all know. And I'm Joe Hillsman. Glad that you're with us. DSUVTV.com. Got to go speak and see with some of the Burke Moore alums. This is Gwinnett County. I have played a lot of basketball in this county. They still don't think I can play. I got my bag in the car. We're not talking about me. We're talking about the young ones on the floor. Newton and Burkmar. Newton is in the blue. 36 to 30 going behind the back. Stop. There's the jumper. In the lane. It rolled in. Good jump shot there. Note is in the book for the first time here in the second half. He has seven points now. Al Durham had seven Josh Faulkner had 11. And we have a 30-second timeout. That field goal will count Faulkner. Faulkner gets that, and a 30-second timeout has been called. So it's 38-32. to Two more games on tap tonight. Coming up next, the high-flying Decula Falcons and the high-flying Douglas County Tigers. The matchup to watch will be Brandon Robinson and Kevon Tucker. I was waiting on that one. I wanted to see Mr. Tucker. Yeah, he's going to put on a show. He had 41 the other night. Yes. 40 easy, just easy. Strolling in the Sunday park, easy. to go here in the third quarter. So early here in the third quarter. And Newton will bring it across. Here's Hagens. Hagens goes behind his back, picks up his dribble. Over to Tooks. Tooks the jumper. Good. Left hand to put that thing in there, Josh Tooks. The set shot. Faulkner with it. Out to the top. Now swings it over to the left. Leroy Jones pulls the three. Good. Leroy Jones is in the book. With nice a three ball, ball off the left corner. 
You know, and sometimes it's that extra pass is what sets everything up. The left wing. Step back. A three. No good by Note. Rebound. Sky for the pull down by Darius Harris. Here they come pushing it all the way. Faulkner shot up off the window. No. Went up with the left hand, and he was fouled. Foul to the Rams, number 32, Josh Tooks. So Tooks picks up the foul. Free throw is good. No Faulkner putting together a pretty good night. That's his first free throw there. It's 40 to 36. Second free throw coming up. And it's good. By Faulkner. It'll be very interesting to see how these teams develop. Both of these are 6A schools. There's a long three out of the corner. It's going to be short. No good. Hagen's on the rebound. Hagen's now kicks it back. Sims, a hard dribble. Floated up and got the roll. Jaquan Sims having himself a pretty nifty night. He now has 11 in the contest. Region 2, 6A. That's Harrison underneath. Oh, Fell off. No good. Rebound going to come down to Chaz Turner. Got to hit the bunnies, man. Got to hit the easy ones. Region 2-6A is Newton, and Region 7-6A, excuse me, Region 8-6A is Burkmar. Now, that region is loaded. If you want an idea of Burkmar's region, you've seen Archer, you've seen Grayson, mm -hmm. Burkmar. In the nightcap, you'll see Shallow, and in the next game, you'll see Duluth. That'll be, I mean, the Cule. That'll be five teams out of that region. Only four can make the playoffs. The That's a tough region. It's, it's sneaky tough, yes. Foul call on J.D. Note. Five-point game, 42-37. to For Shiloh, I still think, should win that region. Dekula will give them a lot. They'll run for their money. Burkmar, I think, will be the three. Archer and Grayson will fight for that four. And if Central Gwinnett decides they want in on the mix, they'll get in on it too. Faulkner with a driving layup and score. So Faulkner really playing well. He has six. If Kevin Stamps can lead that Central Gwinnett team and Brandon Merriweather can really play, but you know, get them playing on a good level, you know, all of your teams in that region are viable. It's basketball. All the way, going to drive with the layup. No, he's getting fouled. Lane Foster going to the line. You know, one thing I love what the, G what the GHSAA has done with, with uh, setting up their regions and whatnot, they have teams that are in the same county and neighboring counties. They're all playing in the same regions now. And I really like that because, no, no, no. And I'm going to tell you why I like that. I, I love that because those teams are going to play each other anyway every year. So if you put all those teams in the same region, that means their non-region schedule could be great, could be awesome. You could have teams going to play in different places all throughout the state in these non-region games, and you get to see some of the exciting and great matchups in that non-region schedule. I, I, I love the fact that they put all those teams together when they're close. Both free throws are no good. For the sake of the SUV TV airwaves, I, I will not respond to that. No, I, I, I'm going to have to say I agree. I think the uh, GHSAA got it right on that one. Well, see, that's how I know because it's GHSA. A. Uh huh. But I'm going to mess with I got to mess with you now, Sylvester. When you really sit down and take a look at how the regions are done, there's an obvious thing there that uh, it ain't cool. Layup is good. It's a two-point game, 42 to 41. Oh, three. Now Durham for three. Check it. That was not Al Durham for three. And to find out more about the 514G LCP smartphone, get the second number three offer. The hurry is not 
Sims on the three-pointer. We got that corrected. And then there's a layup by Harrison. Harrison is doing very well. I understand, in theory, that would be great. Because then you could go out and you could go schedule out of state. Because I'm a big proponent of out of state play at the high school level. I love it. I don't want to see the neighborhood play the neighborhood. Not that much. If the other neighborhood team is good, yeah. But just because they down the street... I don't want to see you beat them by 50. I'd rather see you lose by three over here out of state somewhere. That's me. I want to see the competition. It's 2015. But see, that's we can get on a bus. We can fly. We can drive. We can go wherever we need to go. That's what makes basketball so great because you can you can be gone for a weekend and play three games or four. But see, that's what I love. That's why I say you have the neighboring schools in that same region. In the region, yeah. But that's but, what I just said. Have yeah. the neighboring schools in the same room. But see, I think about once you get to the playoffs, how the playoff. Oh, well. Wow. But of course, yeah, that's yeah. a little region or whatnot. Exactly. And I'm saying yeah. then the non region games. But, but then the non region games are just other county games that's not in that region. So the layup is good. By Newton. I'm going to stop. I'm trying to be selective. <laughs> I'm not trying to be. Um, no, I know what I am. I'm trying to be tactful. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to be. That's why I love events like this. On the radar. Thanksgiving classic driving layup. And he's going to be fouled as he goes to the hoop. 47-43, 128 to go. He's Sylvester Williams. I'm Joel Hillsman. And you know, that's one thing I can say about tournaments like this, like the On the Radar Tournament, On the Radar Hoops Tournaments, and the whole Atlanta Peach Series Tournament that our SUV is proud to be a part of this year and bring, it, bring you some of this great action, man. We get to see some of the top high school talent in the state of Georgia all throughout this whole fall winter break. We get to see some of the best. It's yeah, star power sure. at its best. Yeah, it's lovely. I mean, you look at, we think about it, there has not been one player in this ball game that is not going to be somewhere playing elite level college basketball. And I think by the, by the end of this day, when you look at the six game slate, we may be looking at four to five NBAers. From, from top to bottom out of, the, all, out of the games. Oh, yeah, definitely. We're definitely going to see some people who are going to get paid to play basketball. Oh, yeah. And I don't mean paid at Kentucky. I mean paid on the next level. <laughs> see, there you go. You, <laughs> you, you make me want to go into areas that I can't go into. Because I don't mean Coach Cal paying them. I'm talking about on the next level getting paid. <laughs> Sly really tested me today. Y'all y'all know my mouth is... I get fired off left and right. They're going to inbound it. 49-43. In the corner. There's a three. It is good. Three-pointer is good by Lane Foster for Berkmore. And now they pulled it within three at 49-46. You know, one thing. I wish I, I, wish I knew how many three-pointers were attempted tonight. Both teams aren't afraid to launch from long distance. Yeah. That's just where the game is going now, and you're not. That one thing I know is not gonna happen in high school. The line ain't gonna go back. So, 19-9 it is. Oh, a timeout call. Nope. Coach Rick, Rick Rasmussen called the timeout. He didn't like the activity that was going on. It's 30 and 7, 10 seconds. They have a three-point lead. He has called a. 32nd timeout. 
with 30 and 7, 10 seconds. So right now he can draw up a last shot situation right here with a three-point lead. It's one of those times where Coach earns his money. He earns the big. He earns his salary right here. Drawing up that last play, 30 seconds left. You know, but the one thing about this noon team, I don't know who's going to get the ball because all of them like to shoot. All of them can shoot from outside. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Jaquan Sims has filled it up but pretty good. After a nice, fancy dribbling play that we saw going into this timeout, now you have to worry about that high school mentality. You have to worry about the guy who got juked and fell all the way on his face. You got to worry about that guy wanting to take that shot. 14 points for Jaquan Sims, and now a foul call. Back in for the Patriots with the team, Harrison. Harrison will check in, and going out will be Josh Faulkner. Coach Greg Phillips wanted Faulkner to come on out. Inbound. There's no tail up off the window. Nice. Good. Seventeen seconds now. Here's Faulkner holding it. With seven seconds now. Five, four, Faulkner waiting very late. Gets the screen. Faulkner steps into a jumper. It's a three. Good. Ice cold. Joshua Faulkner cans a three, and we are at the end of the third quarter. 51 to 49. Newton leading Burkmark. One to 49 as we are underway here in the fourth quarter. Beautiful, beautiful. Al Durham with that three. Durham now with 10 in the contest. Flip the shot up, no good. Durham on the break, jump stop, layup, good! Al Durham turning it on. Fifty-four, fifty-one. Long three from Newton. Way to Time answer. The ball game, Hagens. Tie ball game, fifty-four, fifty-four. Seven minutes to go. Three. No. Rebound. Ripped down by Newton. And here come the Rams. Over to Hagens. Kick it to that corner. Now Tate. Tate kicks it back. Now going to hold it. Here's Sims. Jaquan Sims going to turn around. 
See him. Stop. Ball taken away. Leroy Jones, the fourth with the steal. Here come the Patriots in transition. Got it. Blocked. And a foul on the way up. Now it's heating up a little bit. Foul called on Jaquan Sims. Number four to the line to shoot two for the Patriots. So going to the free throw line will be Leroy Jones the fourth. He only has three points, and this is his first trip to the foul line. Free throw is good. Second free throw by Jones is good. Here's Sims holding it. Now he gives it to Hagens. Hagens gets the screen from Toops. Hagens going to go down the lane. The shot is up. No good. And a whistle. Let's check the flat up uh, penalty. Fouls on Patriots 15. Harrison. That's number 2 for the Rams to the line for Toops. Harrison now going to the free throw line. They'll give him uh, uh, Hagens to the free throw line. They will give him two shots. Hagens free throw is good. Into the Rams eleven. Boy, Marvin Barrow now checks in for Newton. He saw spot duty in the first half. Hagens second free throw is good. Tie ball game at 56. Newton and Burkmar. On the radar Thanksgiving Classic presented by the Atlanta Hawks and Metro PCS. Slip. Almost had a steal. Now, going to hold it. They look, and they're working between the rings. There's Durham. Durham now. Gives it back to Lane Foster. Foster being worked on by Note. Now Foster picked the dribble up. Nobody coming to get him in a timeout call by Greg Phillips. He's going to call a 30-second timeout. There were three the play the line Be a 30-second timeout. 56-56. The next clinic is December 21st from 1 to 4 p.m. The tickets to the Hawks Trail Blazers game night is included. 56-56 out of the timeout. And Burkmar will be taking the ball out of bounds. Foster has it. Now he picked up his dribble trying to feed Harrison in the post. It wasn't there. So here's Al Durham. Al's going to bring it back. Al going to go around the screen. It's not there. Still dribbling with the left hand going to the hoop. He dumped it off to Harrison. They called him for traveling. Got him with that travel. And, you know, that, that jump step, that jump step and Euro hop, I guess, or however you want to call it, it is such, <laughs> it's such a move to just use incorrectly all the time. And that's why you always get these travel calls over. Push off. We'll go back the other way. But yeah, you know, it's a devastating move if you know how to use it. But too many people are so used to taking that hop step and then taking another step afterwards. Every time. The old rule is, on a jump stop, both feet land, you can't move after that. If you Euro step, what became the Euro step is how you would change direction. You're actually still taking two steps, but one step is one way and the other step is the other way. The Euro stepping is legal. 
jump stopping is legal. The thing is, both feet must land yep. simultaneously. And once you land, you can't move. So you can either go up and shoot or dish it off. I know. That's my go-to move. <laughs> I got it. I can get you from the left wing or the right wing. You see how I'm interjecting my game into this? I, I, I seem to do that when I'm on the broadcast with you, Sly. Because last year at Hoopsgiving, I told you, my range started when I walked in the gym based off of something you had said. Oh, well, you know, that's that's good for you for you average players. Yours start when you walk in the gym. Mine never stop. Mine never stop. I've been hot since since 1989. <laughs> I was in the fifth grade. I heated up. Folks, this gym will be empty in about two and a half hours. Slide on one day. That's all I'm going to say. 56, 56. I'm going to leave Sylvester Williams alone. Sylvester Williams going to stop poking this thing at me today. Sylvester Williams is a shooter. No, no. I didn't say you weren't a shooter. Go go back to Columbia, South Carolina, and ask about the about the legend. Oh man, which park I gotta go to? I gotta go to Irmo. It doesn't matter. You can go. You can go to all of them. I gotta go to Spring Valley. You can go to all of them. They'll tell you. Okay. All around the city. I traveled. I own the city. Oh, I traveled the city. Y'all never made it up to Greenville then during the summer. I own Green. Huh? I don't own Greenwood. I didn't come out of Greenwood during the summer. Then. From Springfield to Sterling. <laughs> Butler. Ah, oh, he Carolina. I'm Carolina. I'm Georgia, too. Have fun with it, man. Fun, have fun with it. That's what you're supposed to do. And right now, we're in a tie ball game. 56-56. Three oh five to go. Here Hagens goes on the crossover. There's Toops. Toops gonna step back. Jumper is gonna be short. Rebound. They battle for it. It came away and the left is gonna be floated up and in good by Jaquan Sim. Spreading the wealth. DeAndre Butler had twelve at the half. He's yet to score. There's a drive. No. Rebound is gonna come down. Rip out of there. That was Butler on the glass. Fifty-eight to fifty-six. Newton with the lead, and Toop stepped out of bounds on the end line with 2.38 to go, so buckle up now. So Butler is fouled. Commits the foul, and Lane Foster will be going to the free throw line. 58-56. Newton and Berkmar. And Berkmar trying to tie it up. Foster is good. Second one is good. So let's see. Burkmar calls a timeout, and it will be a full timeout. 58-58 with 2:25 to go. So 2:25 to go. Sly in a tie ball game. What do you expect this timeout about? If you're both teams. So out of the timeout, 
Newton will be inbounding in a tie ball game with 2.25 to go. Here's Hagens. Hagens now will bring it up and cross the timeline. He'll be picked up by Jones. Swings it over to Butler. Butler holding on the right wing. Now kicks it to the top and now swings it over on his left side. Here's Hagens. Hagens holding it. Worked on now by Leroy Jones the fourth. Peel back off of him because he had a count going. Now he has a count going on him again. Now here goes Hagens down to the right. They switched on a double. Hagen dump it down to Toops. Toops off the window. Good. Good execution. And big pa- and good patience. Josh Toops. Two more off the window. Durham. Over to Foster. Foster to Faulkner. Faulkner, short corner jumper, no good. They tapped it out of there to Buck. Good play by Note, who tapped it over to Buck. Coach Rasmussen sitting down, eagerly pointing out the instructions as they run the set. Now here comes Hagens. Hagens now on the dribble, going to drive on the baseline, and we've got a timeout call. Coach Rasmussen very upset that they were not running what he wanted them to run. Let's see, is it going to be a full or a 30? It will be a full timeout. Full timeout with 111 to go, 60 to 58. Newton with the lead, and they have the ball, and they call that timeout. 111 to go. Remember, coming up next, it is the Decula Falcons and the Douglas County Tigers as the On the Radar Classic presented by the Atlanta Hawks and Metro BCS continues right here on SUV TV. Or Seventy-one seconds to go here in the contest. Newton has a two-point lead, sixty to fifty-eight. They look to inbound it. Look, look, and it's going to be inbounded back to Chaz Turner, who has checked into the game. Here's Hagens. Hagens will hold it, and he'll swing it. The Note, Note gives it over to Sim. Sims being chastised with the ball. They wanted a double dribble. They didn't get the double dribble call. Durham tried to shoot the passing lane, didn't get the steal. There's the pass to Tooks. Tooks is shot up. No good. They no wanted a call. foul. Newton wanted a foul. Harrison got the rebound. Then they knocked the ball out right away from him. And they're going to dive on the floor. They're fighting for it. There's a jump ball call. Who's the arrow? Now, Joel, that, that, that right there. That right there is what I don't like about high school basketball. This rule, this rule right here, the jump ball and high school basketball, that's one of those rules that I wish would change. I want that to change before they change the shot clock. But you want them just to jump it up every time? Uh, huh? You want them to jump it up? I want them to time? jump it up. I want them to jump it up. You got to actually reward. You got to actually reward the guy for playing good defense, for good hustle. You got to reward him. I concur. I want to see that change at the college level, too. Exactly. Line them up and let's jump it. Let's go. They tried to go to Al Durham. Turnover. They're going to have to foul now. They're going to have to foul. Here's Note. Note. The pass was tipped and almost stolen by Lane Fox. They almost hopped in that passing line. Well, let's see. Checking in now. Bergmar goes to Devon Webb. Webb will check in for the very first time. He may be in just to commit the foul. He's guarding on the ball to get it in, and Faulkner will foul Note and send him to the free throw line. So, a untimely turnover down here on this end for Berkmar. May put them behind the eight ball here the rest of the way. 28 seconds. 60 to 58. It's just a one and one, though. So you got to make the first one. So now here comes Leroy Jones, the fourth, back into the contest. Oh, and didn't, they didn't let him shoot the free throw. Now they had to have another foul. They had one more foul to give. 
That last foul was a foul to give, so now they will be shooting the one and one. No take. We'll go to the free throw line, and he will be shooting the one and one. DeAndre Butler checks back in. Free throw, no good on the one and one. Oh, those free throws are huge. Here's Faulkner. Faulkner dribbling in with 20 seconds. He gives it to Durham. Durham being chastised by Hagens. Here goes Durham around the screen. Durham down the hoop. Kick it out. They won the three. Durham pulls a right wing three. In and out. No. Back tap. Durham will get the rebound. Durham passes it over. There's the jumper by Lane. Foster fouled. He'll go to the free throw line and get two. And they fouled the shooter. In the act of shooting, he was going to go to the line either way. But now, since he was shooting, it will be two shots. Lane Foster going to the free throw line. He is two of four from the line today. Now, see, now it's time for gamemanship. Now it's time for a timeout right now. You want to try to ice this kid. Free throw. No oh. good. It's come off. You want to ice somebody that's two for four in the game? That's why I gave the stat. <laughs> Now he missed that one. Now you have to miss this one. This is when I call my timeout. I draw up what I'm going to do after the miss. Russman, Coach Rasmussen wants the timeout on the rebound. That's what he wants. See, if I'm, if I'm Bergmore, I call the timeout and draw me up a miss. Free throw. No. They, tip, they got the rebound. Harrison put it up. No. And they'll get fouled. They got kind of tussled up in there with .2 seconds to go. Well, Bergmore had their shot. Newton going to walk down to the other end and shoot the one and one. They lead by two with two tenths of a second. Newton calls a timeout. If you're Newton on the front end of the one and one, do you just miss it? Just miss it and game's over. But the ego says you got to hit the free throw. Point two seconds. Why not? Get your name in the book. Get your name in the book. Get 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 some more points to add on to add on to your uh, your season average. You might as well take it while you can get it. Sixty to fifty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> the, first of all, first of all, we gotta go to Vegas and check the spread first. <laughs> we gotta figure out what the spread is on the game <laughs> to see if he hits these free throws. Now, the thoughts and opinions of Sylvester <laughs> Williams are not reflective of those of SUV TV and the SUVTV.com, nor myself, Joel Hillsman. That's all Sylvester Williams over there. 60 to 58. Newton with the lead. They're at the line to shoot the one and one, and there's only two tenths of a second left. Elaine Foster got fouled, had an opportunity. An Al Durham three rimmed in and out. They got the offensive rebound, missed the first of two, missed the second one. Harrison got the rebound, tried to put it back in, couldn't do it, and there's two tenths of a second left. If there's any way, there's not a way. You need three tenths of a second for a tap. I have not. He's gonna miss this one on purpose. Free throw. Yeah, you gotta hit it. Jazz makes it. Sixty-one fifty-eight takes his time and makes the second one. No way they can win now. He didn't even touch the ball. The referees got to talk about that. I know it's two tenths of a second, but the clock didn't start, and the refs aren't going to make them play it over. 62 to 58, Newton with the victory over Bergmore.